Well, a very good morning to you all. It's uh, great to be together again online as we are today. And uh, welcome, especially to those who may have joined us from further afield than Cape Town. Great to have you in our midst today. Uh, we do welcome uh, myself as presider and preacher this morning. I'm presently in isolation, having been in touch with someone who was uh, tested COVID during the course of last week. And uh, so with Stephen, um, I agreed that as I'm languishing at home, uh, I would do both this morning. And Stephen's done some work at eight o'clock with our children's church around the Eucharist today. Uh, we welcome Freya Griffiths as our lay minister and David Sykes as our responder this morning. Uh, a reminder that when you hear David's voice, that's when you're invited to join in with the bold in the liturgies that you've hopefully received by email. Uh, please keep your uh, microphones off though, so we avoid all that feedback. And then we welcome uh, Graham and Bronwyn Reynolds, who will be reading the scriptures for us this morning. And we're thankful to Rob Coombe, who is managing uh, our Zoom processes in the background. Just a reminder, if you haven't been with us before or haven't been with us for a while, please locate the chat button and just indicate how many people are participating with you from your home. Um, and also in the top right hand corner, there is a little button that says view on your screen. If you click on that button, you get uh, a view either of the person speaking, or you can see um, a gallery of everybody else who's participating, either their videos or names. And personally, I find it helpful to click over there just for that sense of corporate um, being, being together. So I do encourage you to, to flip over there. But welcome to this time, and we turn now to our liturgy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Praise the Lord. Praise God, you servants of the Lord. Blessed be God, creator, redeemer, and spirit of truth. Blessed be God's name, now and forever. Let us joyfully proclaim together. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. You raise the dead to life in the spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You bring pardon and peace to the broken in heart. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You make one by your spirit the torn and divided. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Jesus said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your being and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. In a moment of silence now, we call to mind and confess our sins. Firmly resolve to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with our neighbor. And so we reflect together. And we gather that reflection now as we confess together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, 
In penitence we confess that we have sinned against you through our own fault in thought, word and deed, and in what we have left undone. For the sake of your Son, Christ our Lord, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. As we come seeking God's forgiveness, we seek too God's healing and God's wholeness in our lives. And so may Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you, pardon your sins and set you free from them, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you are the living bread. Nourish us with your life, that we will understand your truth and recognize your presence among us. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Graham will now share our first reading. A reading from Ephesians 5, verses 15 to 20. Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. Speak to one another with psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Sing and make music in your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will now say together Psalm 111. I will begin if you can respond with the alternate verses that are in bold print. And so we start. Alleluia. I will give thanks to you, O God, with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright in the congregation. Great are your deeds, O God. They are studied by all who delight in them. Your work is full of majesty and splendor, and your righteousness endures forever. You make your marvelous works to be remembered. You are gracious and full of compassion. You give food to those who fear you. You are ever mindful of your covenant. You have shown your people the power of your works in giving them the land of the nation. The works of your hands are faithfulness and justice. All your commandments are sure. They stand fast forever and ever because they are done in truth and equity. You sent redemption to your people. You commanded your covenant forever. Holy and awesome is your name. The fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. Those who act accordingly have a good understanding. God's praise endures forever. Let us pray. <clears throat> Holy Father, you have revealed in your only begotten Son the power of the new and everlasting covenant. On this day, which we have made your own, feed your people with the bread of heaven as they recount your marvellous deeds through Jesus Christ our Lord. Glory to God, source of all being, eternal Son and Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. And Bronwyn will now share our gospel reading today. Listen to the good news proclaimed in the gospel according to John 6, verses 51 to 58. Glory to Christ our Saviour. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If a man eats of this bread, he will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Then the Jews began to argue sharply amongst themselves. How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, I tell you the truth. Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood 
has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is real food, and my blood is real drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so the one who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Our forefathers ate manna and died, but he who feeds on this bread will live forever. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ our Lord. We continue today with our journey through the theologically rich sixth chapter of St. John's Gospel. Verse 51 is the bridge, the link from last week's scripture passage to today's. And it reads as follows. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. In my sermon last week to the parish of St. Saviour in Clermont, I commented in relation to this verse that we need to hear in these words of Jesus that you and I are the body of Christ. You and I are given for the life of the world. And in fact, Stephen uh, similarly commented in his sermon here at St. Andrews that as we ingest the truth from God and allow God's spirit to really fill us, we too can be food for others. God has chosen to work through the church, and that means you and me. We can feed and nourish people through our presence and guidance and teaching, through our healing words, our compassion and generosity of spirit. And so in terms of both um, my words and Stephen's, a reminder that as the body of Christ, we are Jesus' flesh. We are God's hands and God's feet in the world. As we, remind, as we are reminded in the first letter to the Corinthians, um, this phrase is also a Eucharistic one. The bread which we break, says Paul, is it not a sharing of the body of Christ? And this speaks in the breaking of the bread, interestingly, to our unity as we share together in the Eucharistic meal. It's also definitive. Uh, it's also a definitive phrase, as the Apostle Paul reminds us also in Corinthians, you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. One of the reasons, I suspect, if not the reason that we spend so much time journeying uh, in these weeks with this particular chapter in John's Gospel is that the sign that John offers us, the sign of Jesus as the bread of life, is key to who we are as God's people. And it's also core to what we are called to be. We're invited to see Jesus for who and what he is, the source of all being. As the bread of life, broken and shared in and through us, Jesus not only satisfies, but he also sustains. And he does so primarily by inviting us into direct relationship with God, whom we call source of all being. And the call on each one of us as people of faith is to offer the same gift to the world in which we live, knowing and trusting that through the constant presence of the Spirit of God, our own brokenness is never an obstacle, but rather it's an opportunity for life to be shared over and over again and again. If you're finding it hard to get your mind around this, as, as I must admit I do too, um, I invite you to take comfort from the fact that both last week and this week in John's narrative, the people around Jesus also struggled. Remember uh, that he was not speaking to strangers, but in fact speaking to a community amongst whom he had grown up. They knew his parents and they recognized him. It's generally true that as Anglicans, many of us have grown up uh, from our earliest days with Jesus being part of the fabric of our lives in some form or another. Perhaps at times a, a distant relative that we visit on special occasions, Christmas or a fancy birthday. 
perhaps at other times a good friend with whom we're in regular contact, sharing our, our thoughts and our prayers. Uh, at other times, a counselor in moments of deep hardship and difficulty. And at other times, uh, the one around whom our lives may constantly revolve. As we explore this chapter of John, we're asked, no matter what our experience with Jesus over the years, or even right in this moment, we're asked to see Jesus afresh, to have our perspective of God's role in our lives shifted, and to explore a changed narrative of how we see ourselves. This is, of course, discomforting. And we join those around Jesus in their responses. We know him. How can he now say? How can he ask us to? No matter our discomfort, reality has shifted because God has acted. And you and I are invited to see different kinds of truth about Jesus. And that's what John offers us in this chapter. We're invited to see different truths about Jesus, about what God, um, about what God is up to, and about we, what we, you and I, are called to. It is also an invitation not to just be onlookers, but to abide. Jesus says, those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me and I in them. Now, to abide has a number of different meanings, but I think it's used here actively. It's to belong, it's to live with, it's to embrace, and it's to persist in doing so. While much of this chapter in John's Gospel has been metaphorical, in today's portion, we are presented with some Eucharistic realism, and we're asked to grapple with the concept of Jesus as the bread of life, as we would with real food. Now, the Greek verb here, uh, used by Jesus, suggests uh, a noisy eating that involves gnawing, nibbling, chewing, more like a dog, perhaps with a bone, than a, a cultured sit-down meal. A little different, perhaps, from allowing the wafer to melt gently on our tongues at the altar rail, and more reminiscent of the chewing of baked bread that I see going on uh, in the gallery view on Zoom as we share in the Eucharist from our homes. And of course, at the feeding of the 5,000, it was, after all, barley bread and dried fish, uh, neither of which would have been easy eating. As we grapple with the truths about Jesus presented to us here, it does require more of us than we may be wanting to give. We are being asked to engage with our faith on a very deep level, to dig down and not to be satisfied with easy and superficial answers. We're being asked to join the dots between what we believe, what we know, and what we experience. And to in fact activate the link between all of this and how you and I act in the world, how we live on a daily basis. We're challenged to accept that God has acted through the real life of Jesus, and that God continues to act in and through the reality of our lives, our daily lives. Eternal life, interestingly, in John's gospel, is not some vague after-death experience. It is rather real life in the present moment, in the here and the now, lived in and through the real presence of God's Spirit among us, engaging us in the world as agents of hope, agents of healing, agents of wholeness. And so I'd like to leave those thoughts with you as I close, perhaps not unsurprisingly, with a prayer by Irish theologian and poet, Patrick O'Tuma. So we bow our heads in prayer. Jesus, you shared peace around a table of anxiety. Peace with bread, peace with wine. Peace in the face of the uncertain. Peace in the place of pain. 
May we share tables of peace in places of pain, sharing food and friendship and words and life. Because you came to a fearful world and found your place around those tables. Amen. And so we continue now in prayer. As we have gathered today, we pray for the nations of the world and those that govern them, that they may know what is right and that they may do it. We continue to pray for those affected by the pandemic, those where illness is running rampant or ramping up again, those where the vaccination rollout is gaining momentum, those where education around the vaccination is vital. Help the people of the world to see the humanity in all people. Help us to recognize your presence in those whose customs and beliefs may be different to our own. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for our own country, struggling to balance the medical needs of people against the need for economic renewal, education, and ongoing revitalization. We pray for our president and those who've taken up recent positions or been redeployed to new portfolios. Help all to serve the people of this country with a long-term greater good for humanity in mind and in heart. Give them wisdom and decision and justice in action. Help us to recognize your presence in our leaders and in our fellow citizens. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for our planet. Help all who inhabit the single home to be united in the protection of the earth, to be responsible in consumption and equitable in distribution. We pray for the regions again under fire and those trying to contain the spread as well as those fleeing both human and animal. We pray for renewals of these burnt areas. Help us to recognize your presence in creation and our responsibility to protect, preserve and renew our stewardship of this home for all. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for our church and our community. We raise up those who are struggling within our own neighborhoods. We pray for the sick within our parish as they are listed within the pew leaflet. We give thanks for those who are recovering from illness and pause as we remember those who are newly ill or for whom recovery seems a long way off or too slow. Help us to recognize your presence in times of despair and pain. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for friends, families, those we carry in our hearts, each person who knows us best, those we are related to, and those we have picked or gathered along our lives. We pray for all who are suffer or are troubled. Give them the help they need and good friends to comfort them. Help them to hold fast to faith in difficult times. We celebrate achievements, education, birthdays, anniversaries, new beginnings, or perseverance. Continued social distancing has made connection more difficult, but so much more necessary and important. Help us to recognize your presence in those nearest and dearest to us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Finally, God, our sustainer, we pray for ourselves. You know us each better than we could know ourselves. Strengthen and renew us as we face this new week. Help us to accept the new life of the resurrection, breaking with the routine and same old. Guide us to live as those who have true hope. Help us to recognize your presence in our own lives. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Amen.
And together now we affirm our faith. I believe and trust in God, the source of all being who made the world. I believe and trust in his son, Jesus Christ, who redeemed humankind. I believe and trust in his Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God. I believe and trust in one God, source of all being, eternal Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. We come now to share in the peace and just a reminder of the sign language as a response. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. And so as we gather this morning, we remind ourselves that Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and we share his peace. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Peace be with you. We use the fourth Eucharistic prayer today. And I invite you, if you have bread and wine with you, to hold them up as we give thanks for them. We begin with the bread. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. For us, it becomes a bread of life. Blessed be God forever. We hold up the wine. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. For us, it becomes the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We give you thanks and praise, almighty God, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our Saviour and our Redeemer, for he is your living word, through whom you have created all things. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh of the Virgin Mary and he shared our human nature. He lived and died as one of us to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. In fulfilment of your will, he stretched out his hands in suffering to bring release to those who place their hope in you. And so he won for you a holy people. He chose to bear our griefs and our sorrows, to give up his life on the cross, that he might shatter the chains of the evil one and banish the darkness of sin and death. By his resurrection, he brings us into the light of your eternal presence. And so now with all of creation, we raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And so, holy and gracious God, accept our praise through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. We hold up the bread. Who on the night that he was handed over to suffering and death, took bread and gave you thanks. Saying, take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. We hold up the wine. In the same way, Jesus took the cup, saying, this is my blood, which is shed for you. When you do this, you do it in memory of me. And so together, we proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Remembering, therefore, his death and resurrection, we offer you this bread and this cup, giving thanks that you have made us worthy to stand in your presence and to serve you. We ask that you send your Holy Spirit upon the offering of your Holy Church, 
gather into one all who share in these sacred mysteries, filling them with the Holy Spirit and confirming their faith in the truth, that together we may praise you and give you glory through your servant, Jesus Christ. All glory and honor are yours, source of all being and eternal Son, with the Holy Spirit in the Holy Church, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And so as Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And so the bread which we break is it not a sharing of the body of Christ? We who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. The risen Christ is with us in the sacrament. In a moment of silence, let us worship and adore him. We pray together. We come to this table, not because we must, but because we may. Not because we are strong, but because we need strength. We come because we love the Lord a little and would love, like to love him more. We come because he loves us and gave himself for all. And so the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And so as we eat the bread, either on our own or with those gathered with us, we say, the body of Christ broken for you. As we share the wine, we say, the blood of Christ shed for you. So let us give thanks, for the Lord is gracious. God's mercy endures forever. We say together. Blessing and honour and thanksgiving and praise, more than we can utter, more than we can understand, be to you, O holy and glorious Trinity, source of all being, eternal Son and Holy Spirit, from all angels, all people, all creatures forever and ever. We pray for our nation and our continent in these uncertain times. God bless Africa, protect our children, guide our leaders, heal our communities, restore our dignity and give us peace. For Jesus Christ's sake, amen. And we offer ourselves now in service. Source of all being, we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice in Jesus Christ, our Lord. In the power of the Holy Spirit, enable us to live to your praise and glory. 
Amen. And so the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, source of all being, eternal Son and Holy Spirit, be with you now and always. Amen. Amen. And so dwell in peace, loving and serving the Lord. In the name of Christ, Amen. And so as we draw our time to a close, a huge thank you to all who've helped uh, enable the service to happen. Uh, my, my thanks particularly to Frey and David for leading us in the uh, liturgy. Uh, to Graham and Bronwyn for sharing the scriptures with us, and of course to Rob for continuing to handle things in the background. We, um, we have been breaking away after, uh, at the end of this time together, into, into breakout groups, um, and we've just noticed that over the last while, uh, fewer and fewer people uh, have done so. Um, and our suspicion in terms of one or two conversations I've had is that we've just found the 10 minutes together a bit long, uh, not necessarily for everybody, uh, but for some. So we're going to just experiment a little today by having a shorter time period, probably five minutes, um, in, in the hope that Rob gets those uh, details organized in the background, five minutes together in groups. Um, so do just ask you to consider uh, joining a group for that time. Uh, one of the things we really miss is the opportunity after church just to chat as we walk from the back door down into the car park uh, and perhaps from the car park down to tea uh, and the conversations that one would have uh, in that context. And the breakout groups really are designed to, to help that happen. Uh, so do just ask you to consider joining a group for five minutes today. Um, if you find yourself in a group all on your own and nobody else seems to be joining you, just wait there. And uh, Rob will shift you into a group that does have some people. Because uh, part of what happens is one sets up the groups with everybody who's on the screen at the time one presses that button. And then, of course, some of us drift off elsewhere uh, and so then aren't there to join the group. So there's a little bit of work that just needs to be done in the background. So do ask for your patience uh, with that. We do have uh, a number of birthdays this week, uh, no anniversaries. Uh, but a few birthdays. And Rob, I don't know if you can highlight people as we, uh, as we celebrate with them. Uh, but tomorrow, Judy Fora celebrates her birthday. And I did see Judy's iPhone on. I'm not sure if that's Judy Fora or, or another Judy. Uh, but if that's Judy Fora, jo Judy, we do wish you a very, very happy birthday uh, for tomorrow. Thanks very uh, Judy, much. Uh, you are there. Wonderful. Thank you. And then uh, Judy shares that with uh, Iva. And so, Iva, we do wish you a very happy birthday. I think you're on the list as Cora Jardine this morning in terms of names on the screen. Um, there we go. We found, we found Iva. Iva, may it be a very blessed birthday for you tomorrow. And uh, may you and uh, Cora enjoy your celebrations together. Uh, then Tuesday, we have uh, Edward McKinnon, who's not with us in the sermon service. He, he celebrates his birthday. Uh, Graham Michael, who would have been at the 8 o'clock service, uh, shares the 18th with Priscilla Miller. And Priscilla is with us. Uh, again, uh, Rob, I'm not sure if you could find her, Clive and Priscilla Miller. But Priscilla, I know you, you are around. So Thanks very, very, much. very happy birthday to you. There we go. Rob's found you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Have, have a super celebration down under. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. And then uh, we come to Friday the 20th, and that's our very own Bishop Jeff. Bishop Jeff celebrates his birthday on the 20th. And Bishop Jeff, we wish you um, real celebrations. Hopefully you'll have some time together with family and uh, to have, have some time celebrating with them. So very happy birthday to you. They have one a year, actually. <laughs> I've always 
I've always felt sorry for people who have birthdays around Christmas because then you do you have only Christmas and birthdays one a year. There's a joy of having something in July and August, is that it's separate from those celebrations. So enjoy your one a year there, Bishop Jeff. Um, <laughs> And then on the 21st, uh, Mark Carlson also celebrates his birthday. And I don't think Mark is with us this morning, but we wish him all the best. So uh, thank you all. It looks like wonderful weather out there today. Please, um, please enjoy Cape Town. Um, those of you who are joining us, I, I see we've got the Kwoods all the way from, um, from South Korea this morning. Uh, we've obviously got our extended congregations from Australia. Uh, we've got we've got our extended congregation from Port Elizabeth, um, and I see also Johannesburg as well. So, uh, really good to just have the breadth of of us all together. Um, so wherever you are, enjoy today, and just please continue to be careful. This virus is not something to be messed with. Please be conscious of the way you uh, take care on that level. But may you know God's blessing in all that this week holds. What do you mean? So do 